61% of Albertans believe crime is increasing in part of Alberta where they live. Concern about crime was consistent across all other subgroups, including, including age, income and education, and across all regions of the province. Albertans are concerned about public safety and policing, whether they live in a remote village, a town of 30,000, or one of our province's largest cities. Welcome to a special episode of the Cross-Border Interviews. Today, we dive into a crucial topic that affects the safety and well-beings of Alberta municipalities across this province. The Alberta municipalities recently launched their Think Alberta Vote Local campaign, dedicated to ensuring that political parties and candidates address the key issues that matter to their 275 member communities. Today, we will be discussing the issue of community safety. One of the most pressing concerns at hand for Alberta municipalities is the proposed change to the provincial police. The implications of this decision are significant, and it is crucial that each political party's plan for policing Alberta's communities are made clear before Election Day. Voters deserve to have a say in how their communities are policed. Now, in fact, a recent Alberta Municipalities poll revealed that a staggering 85% of Albertans want to be able to vote on any decision related to a provincial police force. Communities across Alberta have also been witnessing cutbacks that have resulted in a revolving door of repeat offenders. It is time to address this issue head on. Albertans firmly believe that investing more in our community and in our justice system will put an end to this revolving door, giving us safer communities and a better quality of life. Furthermore, we cannot overlook the role that mental health challenges and addictions play in contributing to homelessness and criminal activity. The pandemic has only exacerbated these challenges, affecting large portions of our population. It is imperative that we address the root causes and provide the necessary support to those in need. Now, today on the show, we will be playing speeches from both Alberta Municipalities VP of Cities under 500,000 Mayor Tyler Gandum and Legal Mayor Trina Jones. These individuals will shed light on the pressing issues facing our communities and the importance of finding effective solutions. Additionally, we had the privilege of conducting a one-on-one -on -one interview with Mayor Jones following her presentation. We will hear her insights, perspectives, and potential solutions to these complex challenges at hand. Now, first, we will be playing Mayor Gandum's and Mayor Jones' comments about the community safety and why it's important to have political candidates and political parties address the questions before Election Day on May 29th. First up, Mayor Gandum. I want to start by respectfully acknowledging that we live, work, and play on the traditional and ancestral territories of many Indigenous, First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. We acknowledge that what we call Alberta is the traditional and ancestral territory of many peoples presently subject to Treaties 4, 6, 7, 8, and 10, and six regions of the Métis Nations of Alberta. I'm joined by Vice President Trina Jones, Alberta Municipality's Vice President of Towns East. For the next 30 minutes or so, we're going to speak about one of Alberta Municipality's key priorities, community safety, including policing. This is the second of three major issues our association wants to bring to Albertans' attention during the 2023 Provincial General Election. We're doing so as part of Alberta Municipality's broader, nonpartisan, Think Alberta, vote local. The goal of our campaign is to ensure political parties and candidates address the key issues that matter to our 275 member communities during this election. For more information on our Think Alberta, vote local information campaign, visit our website at www.abmunis.ca. 
I want to take a few minutes now to describe the current state of community safety in Alberta. To start, I can tell you that community safety is a concern everywhere in Alberta. But you don't have to take my word for it. Pollster Janet Brown conducted a survey for Alberta municipalities of Jan in January of this year. These are the key findings. 61% of Albertans believed crime is increasing in part of Alberta where they live. Concern about crime was consistent across all other subgroups, including, including age, income and education, and across all regions of the province. Albertans are concerned about public safety and policing, whether they live in a remote village, a town of 30,000, or one of our province's largest cities. When the survey participants were asked on, on an open-ended basis, what they believed the major cause of crime in the part of Alberta where they live, the most common answers given were the economy and unemployment, drug and alcohol abuse, and homelessness and poverty. It's worth pointing out that only 7% of those surveyed said a lack of policing resources was a major cause of crime. Albertans may be surprised to learn that our provincial government, not our local government, is primarily responsible for the medical treatment and counseling services for people dealing with drug and alcohol dependencies, affordable housing, community and social services. That's why Alberta Municipalities encourages voters to ask candidates who show up at their doors who has the best plan when it comes to addressing the root causes of crime in my community. Wetaskiwin was Alberta's most dangerous city for a few years. While an increase to the number of police in Wetaskiwin has helped to manage that, it was the programming available for mental health and addictions that helped lower our crime rate. In the first year that we had an emergency shelter, overnight stays in cells were cut in half. Now we will hear from Mayor Jones. Now, before we play this audio and video, I want to note that there were some technical issues. The video and audio may seem a little bit choppy, but we have tried to leave the entire speech intact as much as we could have. Communities across Alberta are struggling to address the root causes of crime. We simply don't have the funding or resources needed to successfully tackle the challenges like affordable housing, homelessness, the ongoing opioid crisis, addiction, and poverty by ourselves. Sadly, when the proposed solutions to these challenges fall short or stall out, some people are quick to point the finger at the local elected officials and blame them. That isn't just unfair, it's wrong. Moreover, it doesn't move us any closer to successfully dealing with these complex challenges. Albertans and the communities in which they live count on the provincial government to fund and in many cases deliver the supports and the services Albertans need. The provincial government needs to take the lead and truly partner with municipalities. By partner, I mean regularly engage in meaningful conversations and community safety. Communicate, consult, cooperate, and compromise. These are the hallmarks of a true partnership. After all, Alberta municipalities and our member communities have much to offer in the way of insights and suggestions to the provincial government. I want to bri briefly highlight two more important things Alberta municipalities' recent surveys showed us. First, when survey respondents were presented with ways to address crime and asked to rate the potential impact of each, Albertans gave a high rating to two different options. They said they wanted improvements made to social services for marginalized and disadvantaged individuals. And they said they want improvements made to the justice system for adequate sentencing. Albertans also gave a relatively high average rating to increasing funding for police services. Albertans gave a low average rating for the idea of replacing the RCMP with a provincial police force. We encourage the next provincial government to focus its time, energy, and resources on the justice system rather than creating a provincial police service, as Alberta voters have clearly stated through our survey. This morning, I came from our Coffee with a Cop event, where we, our commanders met with our seniors at our community centre. 
Our residents say they need the catch and release system to be fixed. They want to support our RCMP officers and help in any way they can. And they want the supports to stop the prolific offenders. They want to know who has the best plan for safety in Legal and don't believe changing the color of the stripe on the pants as the pro proper answer. When the same person who has addiction issues is cutting off a catalytic converter, goes to jail and is released, goes on to steal Ricky's truck, goes to jail and then released, and then goes to break into Aaron's shop and is caught and released, there are bigger issues at play and our officers are doing everything they can to arrest them repeatedly so proper police uh, supports and justice system change are critical and need to come from the provincial government. Which leads me to the second important thing. Our January 2023 survey showed that there is a strong consensus among Albertans that if the Alberta government were to move forward with a plan to create a provincial police service, the idea needs to be put through a vote for the, through a referendum. 85% of Albertans said this. Agreement that this idea should be put to a vote was high among all subgroups examined, not just Edmonton and Calgary. As Tyler said a few minutes ago, AB Muni's wants to get political parties, our candidates, and regular Albertans talking about community safety. So our final message was the second important thing in our, our January 2023 survey showed. There's a strong consensus among Albertans that if the provincial government were to move forward with a plan to create a provincial police force, the idea needs to be put to a vote. 85% of Albertans said this. Agreement that this idea should be put to a vote was high among all subgroups examined, not just Calgary and Edmonton. As Tyler said a few minutes ago, AB Muni's wants to get a political parties, candidates and regular Albertans talking about the community safety and policing during this election. We encourage voters to ask candidates who show up on their doorsteps who has the best vote, or sorry, who has the best plan for community safety. In the next provincial government, if the provincial government decides after they're elected that it wants to create the provincial police service, Alberta municipalities firmly, firmly believes the matter needs to be put to a referendum. I wanted to take a moment and play a clip from the press conference from the question and answer session, because if you know me, I like to just try to make things a little bit more transparent and just ask to make sure I'm understanding. Now, if you know our justice system, bail is set by the federal government. Justice is done by the provincial government. They are the judges. They hire the judges. They hire the uh, uh uh, prosecutors, they set up a shop, but bail is set at a federal level. So I wanted to pose that question to both uh, Mayor Jones and Mayor Gandam at this press conference, just to make sure I understood what they were actually advocating for from the provincial government on the matter of bail reform. And I also asked a follow-up question, and it was a kind of a two-part question and one question. I asked about the recent uh, federal government's download of the RCMP back pay onto municipalities. And if that changed Alberta municipalities, uh, Mayor Jones, Mayor Gandam's mind about a provincial police force, here's their answers. And I'm so happy that they took time to answer my question. Greatly appreciate it. I think our members uh, spoke loud and clear that they definitely support the RCMP. And if that decision is going to be changed, that it does need to go to a referendum. And the bail reform is a, a federal issue for sure. I know that both uh, at the municipal level and the provincial level, we're making sure that the federal government hears our concerns with the changes that are being made and making sure that our communities are safe. I think one of the bigger issues that we have is we haven't gotten the questions we've been asked or asking answered yet, uh, specifically with recruitment, deployment, funding, and the actual transition costs. Um, our members want those answers. We need to know those answers before we move forward on any other kind of policing decisions. Now, our sit-down interview with Mayor Jones. We'll be talking about how community safety is important to her and her community of Legal, which is just north of the city of Edmonton. Here we go. Uh, Mayor Jones, I want to thank you so much for doing this. This is an honor to have you back on the show, but this time talking about a particular issue that is of importance to Alberta municipalities. But I want to go from a local angle and talk about the town of Legal and how 
the issue of community safety is affecting your community. And I want to start with the main overarching question, which is you are the front lines. You are seeing what's going on in your community. How has the lack of social services and uh, resources from the provincial government been affecting your community from a community safety standpoint? I, th I think the biggest thing, um, we have a very small staff. We, we have five people in our office and one FCSS lady. She has training. She has uh, the will, the, the heart to do it. She just doesn't have the funding and the, and the ability, uh, which is a problem. We want to treat people. We want to keep people in their homes. We want to keep keep them here to get the supports they need but we just don't have the ability to do that so what ends up happening is we end up being a drain on other municipalities because we have to use their services which creates a snowball effect and everything else so if the province was able to offer those kind of services that our residents need to keep them here and to keep them supported in our community where they're comfortable they're happy they have family it would greatly help our residents out. What services particularly are you talking about? Because FCF is, is one uh, mm -hmm. mo one part of the services that are provided, but what specific uh, services are you, the mayor of Legal, looking for the next provincial government to address when in power? We'd love to have some more mental health supports in town. Uh, we do have a psychiatrist in town. However, he's already overloaded. But, you know, the, for those folks who, who don't need to see a psychiatrist, they need a, a therapist or they just need a counselor or they just need the referral services for our staff to have to take that on um, or, you know, farm it out to another community. Uh, we would much rather have the province be able to bring those services to our community and help us in offering those. Now, in the presentation that Alberta municipalities talked about, there was talk about the uh, how COVID has sort of exacerbated this issue around mental health and uh, social services. Uh, you've been on council prior to COVID. You've been on council after COVID. So I want to know from you, was COVID the sort of the straw that broke the camel back in your community? Or was it a build up to COVID and then just afterwards you're trying to play catch up because you now see it more prominently in your communities? I think COVID presented different issues for us, issues that we didn't know we had. We didn't, we realized how isolated we really felt when we couldn't, you know, refer people to outside organizations or we couldn't bring them in house. Uh, so those folks didn't feel supported in the way they needed. And it, it exasperated their problems, which in turn, you know, affects the other family uh, and their kids and, and everything else. So we knew we had an issue with having the resources to be able to offer mental health and addiction services and housing. And we, we knew we had our limitations, but it really elevated them and really, uh, I, I would say it, it raised even more concerns for us when it came to comes to those issues and the concerns of our residents because they couldn't access those services even further. <laughs> and yes, now we're playing catch up, trying to figure that mess out. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not going to play Debbie Downer here for a second, but I, I kind of have to, to ask this question. What happens if the next provincial government doesn't come to the table with more funding for social services, more uh, supports for municipalities like the GAL when it comes to mental health? What happens to your community? Does the municipality have to look at ways to rectify the situations themselves? Or what are you having these conversations right now if the province doesn't come to the table? We actually are. Um, and the biggest issue I see is our people are going to fall through the cracks. Uh, some of them have transportation issues or um, they have problems reaching out. If we can't get to those people at the early stages and help them find them those supports, there things are going to get worse. The addictions issue may get worse. Their social network's going to get worse. Uh, mental health is going to decline. So we really need the province to focus on those issues, not just in Legale, but 
in, in, especially in those small and remote communities where you, you have to worry about it being offered on Zoom or you have to, you know, have mobile treatment and, and that kind of situation. So I, w I think we need the province to step up and recognize that that's an issue, not just, um, you know, in downtown Edmonton, but the, our smaller satellite communities and especially rural and remote. One of the areas that was talked about yesterday between uh, uh, Mayor Gandam and yourself was also about the repeat offenders and the sort of revolving mm -hmm. door that is the uh, justice system in Alberta. Um, have you seen that locally in uh, Legal of you see the same people doing the exact same crime over and over again? And it's just frustrating for a mayor like yourself to see your community always be victimized by the same people over and over again. It's incredibly frustrating. Um, the example that I brought up in the interview yesterday, um, one individual and his very small friend group was responsible for 80% of the crimes in our community. When those folks um, were taken care of by the RCMP and the justice system, crime went down. We heard, we've heard this firsthand from our RCMP officers. Uh, we had our coffee with a cop event yesterday morning and he was, he knows that these offenders are a very huge issue in our community. So getting them dealt with, however that looks on the justice side it is critical and it helps our residents feel safer when those individuals are not here. So, and, I, and I'm not trying to put words in your mouth here because you just said something I want to pick up on is you want your residents to feel safer. Do they not feel safe now? And I just want to make sure I, I've heard you correctly because I don't want someone to think that you're saying that Legal is not a safe place because I'm going to be visiting here in a few weeks and I'm looking forward. And if you're telling me it's not safe, I'm not coming. I apologize, <laughs> but I will anyway. No, no, I, I totally agree with you. It's, there's, there is perception issues. Uh, especially when these individuals come back out of prison. Uh, we, everybody, everybody knows it's the automatic talk at the post office. It's the automatic talk at the, at the supermarket. Oh, so-and-so is back in town. Lock up your stuff. In general, we're an incredibly safe community. But it's just... Is it just you petty have... crime we're talking about? Or is it actually, like, is it drugs that are coming into your community? Or is it just, like, uh, I think you talked about a carburetor, if I'm not mistaken, yesterday. And I just <laughs> want to know, is it is it that type of petty crime that we're talking about, the repeating offending? Or is it all swaths of crime? Uh, generally, it's, you know, uh, crimes of opportunity, mostly. Uh, you know, checking yeah. door handles, unlocked garages, that kind of situation where they have access to immediate, uh, I, I guess, funding sources for their other habits. Um, so we don't see, we don't see violent crime in, in Legal, um, but it's the theft of vehicles, theft from vehicles, theft from garages, those real, you know, quick, fast, where they can get in and out. Our RCMP officer yesterday told us that uh, an individual can come into somebody's yard and get a catalytic converter off a vehicle in less than 30 seconds. And in that way, they can hit multiple places, bang, 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 and be out of town before we know it. Wow. So. Um <laughs> In the uh, Alberta municipalities, uh, 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 think Alberta vote local campaign. You guys are Alberta municipalities is asking uh, residents, municipal leaders to start having these conversations about who has the best plan for community safety in their area. So I asked this to Mayor Mike Yargo in our interview about infrastructure. So I'm going to ask, pose this question to you, Mayor Jones. Have you had these conversations? We got to lead by example. So has the mayor of Legal had these conversations with your NDP, your Alberta UCP candidates to say, what's your plan to make sure our community feels safe in the next four years? Constantly. Um <laughs> <laughs> it's not just a campaign issue um we we want to elevate these issues of course during the campaign because that's when it's going to get talked about but in my 12 years on council or 13 now i guess um those have been constant conversations how are you going to help us make our community safer how are you working with our police forces how are you working with council how are you working with our residents our cop program you, you, it, it's an evolving conversation but it's 
always, always top of mind. And are you getting the answers you're hoping to when you talk to the uh, candidates for political office? Because while you have your MLAs during government time, but this is a campaign, so you're talking to candidates. Are you getting the answers or are they giving you the runaround? I wouldn't say runaround, but, you know, every politician has their talking points. And, you know, <laughs> I, I, I would love for them to elaborate on specifics and specific plans on, you know, how are they going to, uh, whatever policing looks like. Um, do you have deployment? Do you have recruitment? Do you have the funding sources, uh, the extra supports our, our officers need? Um, we're, we're bringing those questions to them. What's going to happen in the next four years, regardless of what policing looks like? How are you going to help us? And on my last segment about policing, because you, you hit this home in your uh, statement yesterday, um, 85% of the survey that the Alberta municipalities conducted does not want a provincial police force. And if they there is one, they want to be able to vote on it. Why is it important to hammer that home? Because uh, let's be honest, provincial governments can do what they want and they will trickle down into what the municipalities have to deal with. But why do you think it's important to let these parties know that if you want to go that route, you better hold a vote for it? Well, going back a few years ago, uh, uh, the leader of the government said that if we decide to move this way, we will put it to referendum. So that was said. Uh, given that it hasn't been officially put into the campaign platform, it's not really a mandate given to the provincial government. Therefore, if it's not in your platform, if you're not voted in on that uh, specific mandate, you need to put it back to the voters. So my last question for you here, uh, Mayor Jones, is this, and it's the overarching question that I always end on these type of questions. What would you want people to know about the community safety aspect that we haven't talked about? Or what do you want people to know about the Think Alberta Vote Local campaign that Alberta municipalities has put forward? Well, regarding the campaign, um, the thing, uh, the Vote Local is bring it back to your community what does your community need who do you think i mean i'm not asking for anybody to pick my party or somebody else's party i i won't do that i'm completely impartial on the issue but i want people to make up their own minds on which party will form government and who is going to keep their community safe um from my own personal perspective i, I guess getting the message out please report crimes uh if it's somebody stealing your bicycle report it. If somebody stole your car, report it. Somebody spills, steals a spare change out of your vehicle, uh, regardless if you left it unlocked, whatever it happens to be. Without that data and without that reporting, our police officers can't investigate. They can't investigate, the crimes don't get solved, and there's those effects as well. They're very data-driven, and they've proven that that data can uh, help them not only prevent crimes, but solve them. So all I ask is citizens, please, 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 please report everything. And it may, and just to jump onto that note, it may seem like a burdensome thing to do is to call uh, the local police station, but it does help as a former municipal communications person. I know that the RCMP can only do as much as they possibly can with the information that is provided. So as Mayor Jones says, call. And actually, just if even if it's something small, like 20 bucks out of your car, call because it does help. Um, Mayor Jones, I want to thank you so much for doing this. I greatly appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me again, Chris. And I really enjoy talking to you every month. Thank you so much again to both Mayor Jones and Mayor Gandam and Alberta Municipalities for making this episode possible. And also, I want to take a moment and thank you, the viewers, for tuning in and being part of this conversation. If you've enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button so that you can stay up to date on all of our latest interviews and special episodes. We have some amazing guests lined up and we can't wait to share their stories with you. If you're able to, please consider backing the show to help continue us grow this show and produce more high quality content like today's episode. Every little bit helps and we appreciate your support. A link to our Patreon account is in the show notes below. 
Now, don't forget to also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram for more behind the scenes look and show updates and so much more. And finally, and this is a big finally, remember, as much as we love our phones and technology, let's remember to put them down and have real life in-person conversations with the people in our lives. Particularly, let's have conversations at the door with the candidates and the parties about the issues that were discussed in today's episode. Even if it's just for five minutes, it makes a difference. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you next time on the Cross Border Interviews. Until then, remember everyone, just keep talking.